cannot be overcome. Am I talking to somebody here? Now I want to ask you. Please sit down. It's important to listen to it. You are praying. And you are praying where? And somebody goes to Ohozala, or Ugo, or one place or the other, and does something that has made your leg not to wear any shoe on earth. Remember, Malachi 2, the Bible says that, Malachi 2, Malachi 1, that he has sworn to himself and he changed not. So God is the constant king. He can't change. So if after I declared I am a born again, after I declared I am a child of God, if I am not, now when I say you are not, it doesn't presuppose that you are fully living in sin. No. What it presupposes is that that person is a believer but might not know his true identity as a believer. Because there are a lot of people who have surrendered to Jesus and they believe that giving their life to Jesus is all about salvation, going to heaven. They don't know the power they have. So they have settled down for one sickness, settled down for one oppression, settled down for one level of fear or the other. If God's power is much more alive in me, what power can rule over me? No power. You've got to walk in the light of this reality. No authority can come near you. Am I talking to somebody here? No power. The devil is so small for you to handle. No power. Every believer has this seal. The Holy Ghost is a gift that God gave the redeemed. If you know who the Holy Ghost is, if you know what you have, then you will know that 5 million barracks of 3,000 soldiers is not as equipped as you are. 5 million barracks full of 3,000 soldiers each with all manner of air ammunition is not as equipped as you are. That's why the Bible said that one with God is more than majority. So wherever you see me, and anywhere I am, I am not alone. I am with the Holy Ghost. And he has come with all his equipment. The Holy Ghost came with his power. One twelve of the book of John. As many that receive him, to them he gave power. So the coming of the Holy Ghost brings about power. Evolution of power in our spirit being. And there is a change. Because of this, the devil has lost the battle from the get-go. Before the battle even started, he lost the battle. So are you oppressed? Your eyes need to clear now. The devil has done you 419. Your eyes need to clear. There is somebody that has gone to Nsoka. You have come to a place higher than that shrine the person went to. And with your mouth, you will lose yourself. Do you know what shaped me, sir? I've seen families, I saw terrible battles. People are dying. People are suffering. People are having difficulties marrying, marrying. And yet, they do nothing about it. There is no prayer. There is no nothing. They do nothing about it. They just live any kind of life. People are oppressed. The level of battle you see determines your level of spiritual preparations. All of us are not seeing the same kind of battles. But there are certain things you will see. You will even need to pray and start at, stand at the gate to ensure that the battles you saw your children will not see. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, the Bible says that Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. He took James, the brother of John, and killed him. Nobody spoke. After he did that one, do you know what he did? He proceeded and took Peter. The church arose. After the church arose and prayed, did he stretch forth his hand again? He did, that hand was cut off. The Bible says he stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. 12th one of the book of Acts of the Apostles. To vex, to vex them. Put it up. To vex them. Now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands 
to vex any spirit that has vexed you. We uproot that spirit here today in the name of Jesus. To vex certain of the church, to provoke us. That is good. That provocation provoked the church. We wouldn't have gotten as spiritual as we got if battles didn't come. So certain battles raises an awareness of who we are. Some of you wouldn't have been born again if certain battles that came didn't come. So some of these battles drew us to God and pushed us to be in pursuit of God. The child did nothing. And then when he took Peter, the Bible said they refused to eat. They locked themselves up and prayer ascended. It's not the kind of prayer you are praying here and you are remembering the things you will do by 2 p.m. It's a prayer you are praying and you lose yourself in it. Lord, answer me or I won't go here the same. That's the prayer that produces result. The power belongs to you. The power belongs to you. The power belongs to you. And this power is God's dynamo that have the capacity to melt cancer. Has capacity to melt oppression. You have been booked for surgery. This power has the capacity to deliver. That shall be somebody's testimony.